Hi, this is Sahana. Welcome to Entity Framework Code Series. Our today's session is about one of the important components of Entity Framework Code, that is DB Context. Mainly, we are going to cover what is DB Context, how to create DB Context, and what is the role of DB Context in any application. Before jumping into DB Context, let's quickly recap what we have done till now. Because in Entity Framework Code, all these steps are interconnected. First step to work with Entity Framework Core is to install NuGet packages. Side dependencies, you can you can find the folder by name packages. Here you can find the NuGet packages that we have installed. These are the two important NuGet packages that you have to install. Second step is to create models. We have created models folder. Inside this folder, we have created two classes by name employee and manager but in this series we are going to build employee management system so we have created these two classes. next important step is to create db context class so what is db context in simple terms db context is a class that is used to interact with the database we all know that entity framework core is a bridge between object oriented application and relational database and db context class plays major role in doing that job now we know what is db context but how to create db context create db context we create a class that derives from db context let's create one more folder by name data right click add click on new folder i'll name it as data to this folder i will add a class and i will name this as app db context we are going to derive from db context class this class is inside microsoft.entityframework core namespace going further we are going to use this app db context class to talk to the database but this class doesn't know anything about the database where is it and what is the name of the database and what is the how to log into that database system we should give all these information after creating db context class the first step is i am going to set up database connection first i'll show you how to set up database connection in this console application in ASP.NET Core applications, we do this a bit differently. Later, I'll show you that. This DB context class has so many methods. I'll right click. Let's go to definition. This class has so many different properties and methods. Inside this, we have a method by name on configuring. Here we have a method on configuring. This is a virtual method and this takes DB context option builder as parameter. We are going to override this method to give database information. If you look at the summary of this method, it says override this method to configure the database to be used for this context. So we are going to override this method to give database details. Inside this app DB context class, let's override that on configuring method. This is on configuring method. If you notice, we are using this override keyword. This keyword is very much important. We are overriding the virtual method and we are passing this db context options builder. Next, I will write the connection string. I have created the variable by name connection string. This is string type variable. Then I have specified the connection string. Your data source says that this is uh, MS SQL local db. Then initial catalog is the database name. Please remember this database is not yet available in the server because we have chosen code first approach. First, we are writing code, then using commands, we are going to create database. Then next integrated security, this says like we are going to make use of Windows authentication. Next, we can make use of this options builder. Then we should call the method use SQL server. Then we have to pass connection string. This will set up database connection. If you want, you can create constructor and you can have this connection string inside constructor. Let's create a property by name connection string and let's use this one instead of this variable. I'll remove this one and I'll use this one and I'll pass this property. Our database connection is ready. This is how we do it in console application. I'll show you how to do this in ASP.NET Core application. This is ASP.NET Core application. We have created this application while learning ASP.NET Core basics. If you want to learn the whole series, then I have a playlist in my channel. You can go through the videos. I did not open this application to promote the series. 
I have opened this because most of you might have worked on ASP.NET Core applications and Entity Framework Core is mostly used with such applications, not console application. I just want to help you understand how, how to set up this thing in other applications. So I have opened this. Here in ASP.NET Core applications, we usually create this connection string inside app settings.json file. Here we have app settings.json file and here we set up the connection string. Next, after setting up this connection string, inside program.cs file, here using addDB context method, we set up this connection string. If you notice, uh, to this options, we are passing this connection string. This is how we register DB context in ASP.NET Core applications. We are back at console application. Now this app DB context class knows database details. After this database connection, we are going to set up tables. Look at this application. Inside models, we have employee and manager. We want to create two tables by name manager and employee in database. So let's come back to app DB context class. We are going to create two properties. Type is going to be DB set. Next, we have to specify a class name. Let's say you want to create table for this employee. Then you should specify employee. Let's name this as employees. We want to create one more table for manager. Copy this one. This time pass manager class. This way, later when we create database, two tables will be created, one for employees and one for managers. Employees table will have columns by name, employee ID, first name, last name and salary. And manager table will have columns for manager ID, first name and last name. We have successfully created DB context class and we are going to use this class to interact with the database. That's it for today's session. See you soon in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.